Hello, my name is Liam Dunn, and today I will be teaching you about the changes of art throughout history. How art has changed over new techniques being founded and numerous historical events and world issues. Ancient Greece was a starting point for major advances in art. Of course, before this period, art was being created. But specifically, before the 500s in Egypt, Greece, and Rome, art was in its first major advancement. Right now, I'll be focusing on the Classical Greek period. The classical period was critical in establishing ideas about beauty, form, style, and the use of art. Sculpture was the primary focus. Before this period, statues had little emotion and were stiff. This is where the contraposto stance was created. The contraposto stance was a realistic proportion of weight. This was a breakthrough in realism styles. The picture here on the board is called the discus thrower from what was created before this period. You can see the weight shift in the body, as if someone was going to throw something into the air. His arm is positioned up to launch the discus in the air, his legs in a lunge. His right leg holds most of his weight, ready to spring up and throw his, his discus. Not only is this remarkable, but the muscle indentation, the muscles engaged with this powerful spring. His body has indentations that show that what it is to be truly human. Many of the artwork is dedicated to the Greek gods, not only statues, but architecture as well. For example, Phidias was an Athenian sculptor who created an 11.5 meter long statue of Athena Parthenos. The sculpture of the goddess Athena was created in honor of her and to serve as an offering for her protection and wisdom. During the Dark Ages, plague and famine were spreading, which made it difficult for artists to experiment. As well as art, in most places, needed to hold religious meaning. A job for artists were hard to obtain if you weren't working at the church as an artist. Art at this time was made to show the importance of their religious culture. Paintings of this time are described today as very poorly drawn, although that isn't the case. They use these very simple shapes and designs to represent symbols and different allegories to create deeper concepts. Compared to the beauty of realism, it may seem as a bad piece of art. But from the depriving freedom of artists' creative thinking, the concept of humanism was created. People started to challenge the idea of just believing that God was the center of everything here on Earth. The concept of humanism promoted the idea that humans were the center of the universe that humans should embrace their achievements in education, classical arts, literature, and science. For example, in this painting named the School of Athens. The Renaissance fully embraced this concept and created a whole revival. Renaissance art was focused on realism and naturalism. A great example of this was Leonardo da Vinci and his brilliant artworks. During his apprenticeship with Verrocchio at his art workshops, learned and developed the use of oils in paint. He embraced different techniques such as sfumato and chiascuro. Chiascuro is Italian for light slash dark. It uses the contrast of light and shadows to achieve a 3D illusion on a 2D surface. Leonardo made it his own by adding black pigments while other artists used more saturated hues. He also used sfumato, Italian for smoke, the blurring of contours and edges. This changed the sharp and strict contours of previous art, but made them blend. It was a way for artists to paint things as they appeared to the human eye. Leonardo changed paintings in a way that made them seem real with new techniques such as blending and shading to create a more lifelike appearance. Leonardo quickly started to surpass his teacher, Verrocchio, had invited Leonardo to collaborate on some of his paintings, like Tobias and the Angel and the Baptism of Christ. This surpassing is clear in their collaborations as well. In the Baptism of Christ, Leonardo painted the angel on the far left. Verrocchio's angel has clear and sharp lines but Leonardo's has no lines that determine that jawline. It's a smooth fade which creates a more human-like portrayal. This fade is also much easier to do with oil paints rather than tempura, which Verrocchio used, which was determined by X-ray screenings. Not only were paintings advancing, but so was theater. The engineering for these productions was revolutionizing so quickly, which Leonardo had a hand in. Leonardo was quite drawn to everything that the theatrical arts had to bring. When he moved from Milan to Florence, he became a producer of pageants. Pageants were a show or entertainment depicting historical or religious ideas. In these productions, Leonardo created stunning sets with great detail to emphasize the importance of the story. In one production, La Dene, written by Balthazar Tacone, Leonardo had a system of ropes and pulleys to lift their mercury into the sky. Later on, Jupiter was transformed into a rain of gold to impregnate one of the characters. He became incredibly famous for his intricate set designs, which were the first of their kind to move. As well, he used the detail of props, choreography, costumes, and sets to depict a more powerful and meaningful story. The Catholic Church wanted to return the arts through religious themes. 
This resulted in the end of the Renaissance era. Baroque art still kept the Renaissance expertise in realism, except added more dramatic effects to the paintings to portray a more godly look. They used more light and shadows to try and portray these themes as well. The Rococo, coming from the French word Rocaille, art movement, used pastel colors, natural motifs like marine decor, leaves, and vines, and asymmetric ornamentation to create a very playful mood. These playful scenes consisted of parties, wealthy aristocrats, mythological creatures. This style was mostly inspired by King Louis VIII's death. He favored the wealthy and also favored the divine right of kings to the point where he forced religion conformity on the French people. People were not a big fan of him. As well, he also favored the Baroque style because it signified his glorified stance. Art in the Baroque had been very expensive and not attainable. The goal of neoclassicism was to bring back the classical beauty from the ancient Greek and Roman eras, which was influenced by the dissatisfaction with the Baroque and Rococo eras. This style included using simplicity and symmetry, making art serious, unemotional, and heroic. This style mostly spread because of the Grand Tour. The Grand Tour was a possibility for young aristocrats studying literature and art to travel the world's most artistic places. For neoclassicism, Rome, Italy, showed much of the classical structure from Greek art, which had many sculptures and classical architecture. And people took these ideas and implemented them into their own homes, which Washington, D.C. is still decorated with these ancient white marble monuments, and the reason why president paintings were painted with such emperor-like manners. This art period had the same ideals of the neoclassic era, although its unique details helps the invitation of the Impressionists. Romanticism at this time was during the French Revolution, so people expressed freedom and legitimacy of law, although others were mainly attracted to more historical and classical mythology, which included bizarre ideas and godly like pictures and landscapes. Impressionism was created by French philosophers and scientists studying perception and color theory. An the example they made of their term was Cla Claude Monet's work. They described it as more of an impression, which wasn't like the exact representation of a reference, but the way the artist saw the example. Monet had a very unique style where he wouldn't blend in his colors. He used bright colors jumbled together, then rather using the light to dark technique. His style inspired a generation of artists called the Impressionists. Expressionist art was the portrayal of reality, but distorted to express the artist's inner feelings. This movement developed from the World War I, capitalism, and the rise of industrialization. Van Gogh was a very mentally ill man with tremendous abilities. As he grew older, he started to gain horrible anxiety to the point where he was experiencing hallucinations and psychotic breaks. Van Gogh inspired this Expressionism era and many artists in it. Pop art was a huge hit after World War II had finished. There was a lot of sadness, understandably, but people were moved by this art surrounding around pop culture. Artists used comic-like designs and different ideas to convey this unique style. Andy Warhol created the most popular pop art recognized today, highlighting popular brands like Campus, Tomato Soup, and Coca-Cola, and celebrities like Marilyn Monroe. Today's art is a little funky. I'm not sure if you have, but I've walked around Vail and its various art exhibits, and I always end up asking myself how this kindergarten level painting can even sell, yet enough for thousands of dollars. However, there is a deeper meaning to that one big dot. The contemporary style is hard to explain. Basically, it is art that uses various different materials and media that express concepts concerning today's issues. Through wars, societal issues, mental struggles, Artists of our past have used that to create beautiful pieces of artwork. Art did not cease to exist as time went on. It grew and inspired people to do more with their lives.